Voice interpreting. I could. Okay. okay. I will sit back here. We're not going to do headphones, we're just going to voice. Okay, so I'm just interpreting for you. <coughs> One teacher does all sorts of stuff. I feel the spirit leave. It sounds like they're bragging, like right? She's so proud of their technical skills. It's really important. That's right. It's really important to oh, get rid of challenges. When technology helps us and assists us, it's great. It adds a nice little sprinkling in the spirit. And it helps us focus. But it lets the spirit take over its own way. When technology is broken, it's broken. And you know, people are able to stop and do the right notes and then they keep going. And you know, different ideas and different. Does that make sense? Okay. So here's an example. Teaching lessons that are spirit centered and technology supported. You know, that's kind of like when we come follow me, you know, that emphasis. Home centered, church supported. Right? And general conference, they keep emphasizing that. And I thought that was really interesting and easily to apply here. Spirit centered, technology supported. That's my own rule. It emphasizes again, I'm not called as a teacher. Actually, everyone is called as a teacher. All of us. Every single one of us is. We're also students. We're all teachers in different situations. In church, at home, we're all teachers. <laughs> right? That's great to be back out here. Remember, the Holy Ghost is our teacher. Yes. And we need to practice. Right. Let me show this video really quick. Let me show this video. Oh. It's only about three seconds. Set examples for people, so we're all teachers. 
we're also leaders. We're also followers. Um, that's kind of what he said. Christ taught by example. And we all follow that through our own experiences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, all oh, those kind of all connected together, that was perfect. We're all disciples. If we mm -hmm. follow Jesus Christ, oh. he's commanded us to follow. Mm -hmm. This is a complicated word. Teaching by the Spirit. Let me ask, what does that by mean right here? Teaching by the Spirit. <coughs> just they're going to throw out that, so it's just copy in. Through the Spirit. Impacted by the Spirit. Relying on the Spirit in prayer. With the Spirit. Partnering with the Spirit. Okay, great. Got another one Realize prayer is welcoming the Spirit, inviting the Spirit. So, by means with, in companionship with, welcoming, following, being partnered with. Okay, and we're going to move on to this. With technology. With technology. That kind of adds quite a bit to that. It supports my relationship with the Spirit, or does it detract from my relationship with the Spirit? I want you to think about that. I have a couple examples to show with technology, whether it's supporting or whether it's distracting. So I want you to think about that for a minute. The Spirit testifies to our heart, each individually, and gives us thoughts to our mind, feelings to our hearts. And technology uses that Spirit and helps with that. It kind of helps us to ponder and helps the Spirit. But if technology is distracting and complicates things, it's not really helping. Be influenced by it. Mm -hmm. blessings. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I think the technology can waste your time. Absolutely. But sometimes it really helps. It just depends on how it's Right? Absolutely. You can see both sides. If you if you've watched my, my PowerPoint, you'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I went with my family at the same time I was there. There was no internet, and I should be not. There was no internet there, so I was working really hard and setting things up. I had spent a few hours. And so this is my first PowerPoint. I worked really hard, and I used to it. Sometimes it's challenging to work and prepare with technology, and sometimes we let it take over our lesson, instead of being following the Spirit and letting Him lead and guide the lesson. <laughs> All right. This has helped us to understand the relationship we have with technology and following the spirit. Go ahead and read that, and then I'll sign up. Okay. Audio with visual aids in a class can be a blessing or a curse, depending on how they were used. They might be compared to spices and flavorings that go with the meal. They should be used sparingly to accent or to make a lesson interesting. They shouldn't be a need. <coughs> Technology should be a resource for class discussion, not the center of attention. <coughs> they have an experience primary teacher in a hearing ward and getting kids to pay attention to visual aids. It really, really helps. And then I moved to Arizona to the Deaf Branch. And they said, and oh, what a different experience you had. You need to use technology so that, and PowerPoint, I've never used PowerPoint before. I'm still trying to learn how to use PowerPoint. That's really interesting. Have you noticed with kids that visual aids really helps people interested? We can use that to help, but if they're getting distracted, when they're done, you can discuss that so much easier. Technology really helps you begin that discussion. You would suppose if you're going on a trip and you remember how awkward it was with technology, and once that technology came out, you're able to use it. You know, finding that balance is really important. I teach middle school, and I usually depend on that and learning it. It's really cool, and now I'm kind of finding that balance. Sometimes we use technology for reasons to 
you know, find out words. Sorry, people are concentrating. Uh, it's hard to explain how to understand when we show pictures, we can connect that idea and clearly explain. <coughs> Is this better? Can everybody see me all right? Am I clear? Great. Are you okay? Oh, that's pretty stable. Okay. Um, one of the feelings that I want to share, I'm going to share a story with you. How can we tell when you're teaching a class? How do you notice? remember from Elder Holland's quote from before, that you look in their eyes, and Elder Holland said, you look in their eyes, their eyes will tell you everything you need to know. Oh. Their eyes, if their eyes are distracted and they're looking at the technology, that's, that's letting you know. Their eyes are all over the place and you have to dance, then they look at me. If you look in their eyes, it's really hard. Better comment back here. We're going to go ahead. One, two, and three. So the first, tell, tell your name first. My name's Bonnie. I notice that when I'm teaching, if the kids are sitting back and they're quiet, they look like there's nothing going on inside. And so I need to know that I need to get them involved there and get them to share. And so I need to know what I need to do. That tells me what I need to do. You, know, you really have to vary what you're doing. You need to focus on technology, how you can involve it so that it isn't distracting. You know, it's, it's really important. Sometimes we need to limit the technology, sometimes we need to increase how much we use it. That's, teaching in the Savior's way is a great resource. Uh, it's translated into ASL. It's a great resource to help you uh, to learn different skills to help you. A great resource. It's only a couple of dollars down at the distribution center. Anyway, next. My name's Mark. Um, depending on the individuals if, and what level they're on, you know, some people have good uh, visual skills, and if you watch them, sometimes if you change that technology around, it makes lights go off in their brain, and sometimes it distracts. That's right, it's time to the bottom. Right? Right? For me, I, let me tell you, sometimes I'm tempted to use technology and rely on that, and for 20 minutes, I have another 20 minutes left, and cut that off, and sometimes my teaching moment is lost because I want to get to the end of the PowerPoint. I want to get to the end of it. <coughs> but sometimes you, you have to stop it so that you can utilize that teaching moment. Sometimes we, we just want to uh, keep following that because I mean, that's an apostle teaching, right? <coughs> hold on, hold on. Tell me your name first, please. Susan. Okay, sorry. Don't try to always fit everything in your lesson. Follow what the class needs. Listen, learn, discuss, and then keep going with what they need. If they need to back up, back up. Follow the spirits of the individuals that you're teaching. Get what they need. Soon we're going to interrupt for a minute and let you think and write down. Do you feel that inspiration before you write down? Here, you're going to feel some inspiration, so I want you to read that from that book, Teaching the Savior's Word, that I just was talking about. The ultimate purpose of everything a gospel teacher does, every question, every scripture, and every activity, is to invite the Spirit, to build faith, and to invite all to come unto Christ. Do all you can to invite the influence of the Holy Ghost. If, to if technology helps, use it. If it's not helping, turn it off. Now, we're going to hold off on our discussion for a minute. I think my page is 25. Page 25. There's a, the first. What have we learned about the role of technology while teaching with people? When technology is involved, what, what have you learned today? Take just five minutes of quiet time to go ahead and write down what you know.
I'm going to leave that up there. Most of you guys are looking at me, which means most of you guys are done. So some of you guys are still looking down. That's all right. But most eyes are, are looking on me. So that's, that's a good indicator to me. Uh, I have two or three comments before I think about how. But right now we're going to discuss how the spirit is involved in technology. Let me go to explanations first. Tell me your name first. Sorry to interrupt you. Tell me your name. <laughs> I was called to be a Sunday school teacher, and I would find a calm place. And after years of experience in the scriptures, that really helped. When I went home with uh, the, the new church program book, that Can Follow Me book, I really poured out my heart to the Lord to ask him to have the Spirit help to guide me. And each lesson that I study and plan, as I read those scriptures again, I wait until that inspiration comes. And then I start with my PowerPoint and I set up what I need to do. And sometimes I have to adjust it, and sometimes I have to, I over plan. Okay, I always over plan my PowerPoint so that I can follow the Spirit. If I can adjust whatever the kids need in each of the members of my class have an opportunity to be teacher to stand up and, and tell what they've learned, share their experiences, add their own personality to the lesson. And the, each Sunday school class, I will express um, and ask for the blessing of the Holy Ghost for each member so that they learn what they need to learn so that we can all be edified together and feel the Spirit and feel our Savior's love. And every time, You've got to use the Spirit to teach, and you will have a wonderful experience. Let me add just a little bit to that. When you pray before, when you first feel the Spirit, and then you set up your lesson, you don't do the PowerPoint first, get it set up, and then pray and hope that your PowerPoint as well. Understand? You use you use the Spirit as a guide, so that's great. You use the Spirit first. You know, order is is important. Quick story, and then and we'll go. Uh, my, I have a Sunday school teacher that I take turns with, and I get my lesson ready so that I have it perfect. You know, sometimes it's great, sometimes not so much. The other teacher, they say, I have everything ready. I think, great, and can I show that his PowerPoint to teach my lesson? Uh, it's, it's a little bit difficult. You've got to use the spirit first. Someone back here, I saw someone in that here, right? Okay, somewhere in this area. I don't remember. Okay, we're going to go ahead and read this comment. I was impressed in the scriptures that said chemistry of the Lord first and then things that you add to you. The spirit of Christ. Pray. Often, take the time, read the scriptures, ask, and you will receive. And don't, you never be afraid to ask. Do you guys agree with that? It's like, ask. I'll go here in the back. You guys see, after we'll discuss, this will be the last time. My name's Becky, I'm a teacher's aide in a high school. I have 50 deaf students. And often, as we're teaching, we look around at the kids, they're just dead. And the teacher will try and use technology, and 
they have to use more visual aids to get them involved. And then the kids are fascinated and they have so many questions and the discussion's great. And it's a great opportunity for missionary work is where they call it, but I thank God for the children that they have Heavenly Father who makes them precious. I am so thankful for technology too. I'm grateful. He's given it to us for a reason. There's so many things, but we really have to be careful how we use that technology. We're going to go on to the next. I'm sorry, we're, our time. We have three different topics. We're barely finishing with PowerPoint, so we're going to move on to the second topic, topic now and talk about videos. And then we're going to talk about the Gospel Library app, because I want to show you a little bit in that app. And I hope that you can uh, improve your teaching with technology. sentences are pretty long. Understand, there's some really good words in here. You think maybe it's going to improve, but when you've got so much, maybe you can get good though. Maybe spreading it out into a couple of slides. Maybe adding a picture. You know, because PowerPoint, we just tend to throw a lot of stuff on here. But looking at this, I mean, there's a lot of bullet points here. Try to avoid that. I, it, I try to avoid that myself. So I have a question. In Acts 17, what's going on in Acts? Do you remember what's going on with Paul right there? Oh. You know, maybe discuss that before that comes up on the PowerPoint. Or turn that off. You know, these are all questions. Maybe you could make it big. Have a big question in the middle of a different slide. And that can spark some interest and help your PowerPoint be a little more engaging. And when we have lists like that, then pages with questions that are really big and realize, make it big so the kids in the back can see. <coughs> also, <coughs> questions of different color, add colors, yeah, colors help a lot. And you know, there's maybe some kids who can't see red, so you use purple, you know, different ideas like that. Experiment with it, absolutely, absolutely experiment with it. So I'm going to show one more slide, and I think uh, it'll be on the same topic. How can I improve this slide? <laughs> it's so big. It changing the color. What else? What else could I change? If 
if I was using those two paragraphs, maybe do one and the next slide the other. That maybe you can see a little bit better. Yeah, that's a possibility. Tons of tons of hands picked already. Hold on, tell me your name first. I'm sorry. Barry Roberts. Okay. For myself, anyway, some low vision students, it's better to have black with green letters and then they can read that better, better than white on black. And so maybe treating that back here in the back. Two things. Sorry, my name's Tamara. First thing, exactly the same as he said. Low vision, need bigger words. Black on white is just not good. Anyway, dividing and adding pictures to scriptures and quotes like that. That becomes, it could become four different slides of pictures. That would help to comprehend better and add scriptures to go to. So you're discussing as you're looking around and thinking, are you guys all teaching? Absolutely. I'm loving your ideas and your comments. One more, we're going to do this one last. I, I love this quote, but maybe print it and distribute it to the class instead of putting it in there as a slide. And then kids can focus on that and they can write on it and take it home and really be inspired by it later. I mean, this is a lot. I, I like that idea of putting that on the paper and sitting home with it. Okay, sure, one more. My name's Dana. Uh, Deanna Sub. Thanks, Deanna Sub. Well, for Jeff Wine in the group, maybe what's better, in my experience, which color is best? I think they were saying black with green <coughs> words. Yeah, I'm curious. Are there any other suggestions? What about over here, low vision over here? I don't know. I think it just depends. When you have black backgrounds with green or yellow words, some deafblind don't even look at them. Some deafblind want to look at it and can see the different colors. Why don't we ask up here, what do you guys think? Black background with white words. So this is a little bit gray, so he says maybe a little more white. Back here in the back. And the you know, audience, when you're teaching a big group like this, does that mean you can teach you know who your audience is and you know what color's best, you know what they need so that they can see. So you can change to fit your students' needs as best as possible. And you improve slowly every time you teach that same group. You know, sometimes you freak out a little bit, but you know, you just you get better with time. So we're going to do this last comment up here. On the surface, you know, when you provide tactile options for the low vision, you know, that black background with with different colored letters. You know, each individual is going to be different, and you need to be flexible and see what their eyes can get to know what their eyes can see. Yeah, like what this gentleman said, where you print it so that they can take it home and they can read it themselves. That's perfect. Okay, sorry, last comment. Okay, if you have a long quote like this, maybe you even just make one word bigger to emphasize the word. And then as they skim through what they're reading, they, they that word stands out. And uh, the keywords take, you know, maybe make it italicized, bigger, different colors, kind of like a meme, right? you got to keep it simple so that they can scan through it quickly and easily. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to go on to the next. Okay, quick, 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 quick. My name's Carmen. As a teacher, as a good teacher, she was so great. And she would have a sentence up there, and she'd have big words, and she'd have them in red or underlined so that we could learn. And she would expound and explain what those vocabulary words meant. I enjoyed that so very much. Because that woman's sitting right up here in Beverly. <laughs> she's writing. She's not listening to you. <laughs> she said, thank you for your PowerPoint because you helped her to learn. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even know that. I wasn't paying attention. No, I was writing. <laughs> oh, that's funny. We learned from each other. That was perfect. Thank you. Okay. So, for real, last one. Back here. Tell me your name. I noticed in the past that death. Uh, if they see big words, they just ignore it. Yeah, you know what? You gotta make it small words so that, so that the translation is easier. That's interesting.
<laughs> Big pictures with words on the side. Words in different colors so that they stand out. Your your side is taken straight to that word feed to help you find that. Maybe that, seeing this little picture down here for who the quote is from. It's an idea. I love the Bible videos and we do screenshots from them so that you can remember that story with one picture. And sometimes, uh, they haven't read it yet this week, and so that picture tells the story. You really should be studying Come Follow Me the week before your lesson, just putting that out there. Matthew 14, 22 through 33, they can open it up, they can have it ready. And like, well, what was, it? what was the reference, what was the reference? And they can look right up at the slide and see that. You can read it together, and you can pay attention to this question as you read. That inspires faith. And then they're able to get into it. I forgot the question. They can look up and they can see it big on your slide. So sometimes that really helps the spirit. My name's Elena. As I'm reading the story, and there's no pictures. I start to think to show with pictures how how I could sign that, how how I could visualize that with pictures. That's helps people understand differently when there's nothing there and they're just signing. You don't remember who's talking and who's having the conversation and the names of all the people. It all just gets muddled together. So when there's a picture and there's names, you start to connect names with, with individuals. Exactly. Okay, look at this picture. There's three questions. Do you notice? These questions are limited to two or three. It's not this big long list of questions. Because the, then the discussion gets too convoluted. With this, it's limited, it's more focused. The discussion stays on, more on topic. It's a great uh, opportunity, great idea. It helps limit to two or three, or once you start getting four or five, six questions, it really gets a little bit too weighed down. And again, the references are right here. Okay. <laughs> so the scriptures, when they look down, they look up if they're looking into their scriptures. And so I prefer to have them looking up the sign. So that was a good one. The second one was uh, video, the Gospel Library app. I want to show, I like to show scriptures from the Gospel Library app. Too many. It's complicated when you're, everybody's looking down at the scriptures you need to look at. What about class activities? When everybody's signing, you miss things, you're writing things you miss, you have to explain it over and over and over again. A couple of times, if you write on a piece of paper, and then you can put that paper up, and then kids are able to write it on a piece of paper, and then you're not having to get everybody to make sure they understand. It's impossible that, uh, Putting it up right here on the PowerPoint could help aid everybody. Right? Have, letting people take pictures of your PowerPoint screenshots, that too. Notice this picture. We've divided it into three different groups. It focuses. Group one, I want you to focus here. Group two, I want you to focus on this character. Group three, I want you to focus there. Which group did you choose to focus on? And then you can have this big discussion about this one scripture, and that really helps to facilitate and allow the spirit to be there and help you get through things a little bit quicker. <laughs> right? Sometimes you don't, you wish you had more time to teach, but with the spirit there, it's amazing what happens. Hey, 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 hey. pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. I have a question. Hands, hands, hands. Whoa, whoa, whoa. One person at a time, guys. One, one person at a time. Susan, okay. Don't fly there. <laughs> when group one is ready, they can share their question. Group two shares their question. Oh, you put different questions? That, that is a good idea. The two comments. Imagine, it's just an idea for a class. For, you know, class activity. I was going to try this, but there's just not time with this group. Anyway, 
but I thought it would be fun to try. You put scriptures. It's ordaining prophets with Jesus Christ. Matthew 27 is the main scripture that we're studying. And then you can make connections between these different, and they can copy that. They can pick and choose the ones they want to study. I don't know if it would work, but this was an idea that I had, and I thought, this is a great way to use technology to facilitate a class activity. I want to show you, sorry, I'm curious. With videos and Gospel Library app, I feel like that's more of a priority, so I really want to see. I only have about five minutes left, so I. what do you guys want to see? Video or the app? App. I think I'm going to do a little bit longer with the video and then just quit on the Gospel Library app. On the handout, it's the same. It has all the information. So, But the Spirit is telling me that maybe we just need to move on. Church video tends to use videos and it doesn't work because the Wi Fi's not working and everything's just kind of hands on. Yep, we've got to improve every time to see. Have you ever tried Docs? Not Google, Docs app? Doc. Anyway, you can download those videos and show them. I tried it once, but I haven't really had a lot of experience with that. I haven't really perfected. Vita is my name. That paper helps for after when we go home, we can ponder and we can actually, you know, study it more on our own. We've got all day, we're not constrained by time, right? It's just like a program book with lessons. I love that. That Deaf Symposium Committee gave you that program that you can go home and remember what we talked about and write your own things down. So I'm going to show a quick video. This is kind of a, an imagination video. You see, it's a kind of mockumentary. It's a mock bishop. Anyway, it's a Heller's Forum lesson at a general conference talk. So, I want you to see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and show. It's only like a minute, 30 seconds. It's only 52 seconds. Let's see if it'll work. I hope it'll work. If not, I'll turn it off. Okay. Hello, brethren. Today we're going to be teaching a lesson about a general conference talk. I'm putting it right here. Yeah, I was just making this up, right? What does this word mean? Good, thank you. Yep. Come on, give me more. Yep, awesome. <laughs> there is the time to sing. Great, thank you. We're going to go ahead and start our general conference talk. Thanks. I really liked what we studied today. Thanks so much. We'll get the opportunity to watch this video. Then we'll have a discussion. All right, are you ready? Let's go ahead. That was a great talk. I encourage you all to study it at home and apply it to your life. <laughs> Thanks. I bear my testimony that I know this talk is was true, and it's really inspired my life. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Sorry, time's out. <laughs> that was a great discussion. <laughs> no worries. We'll see you next week. <laughs> I want to emphasize with this. Is this bad? The Holy Ghost will help us fix our mistakes and support each other as we watch that. But the point is, it's not to criticize this way of teaching, but to see how we can improve it. Because sometimes that's all the time we have. Sometimes that's all we can do. But how could we improve this? Let's discuss that really quick. Back here in the back. Carolee. 
we become really skilled when we learn how to edit your videos so that we have specific points. And that's, how, it's required that you have to learn something new, right? Instead of maybe sh showing the full video, edit it. Show just different clips, different focal points. You can watch the rest at home if you want. But in class, you have to pick up the parts that you want to really discuss. Okay, over here, Susan. Start with a question. Like with child, help give them something to pay attention to. And then stop the movie to discuss that question. That'll mm -hmm. save your time and you can go ahead and teach different things that you throw out. And that way time goes quickly. And instead of at the end asking a question, then they have to think back through the whole video and remember what they watched. Mm -hmm. I'm Mark. And based on group discussions that I've watched with deaf hearing, it doesn't matter, more than two or three minutes of a video, you're going to lose interest. Absolutely. Have you noticed that Instagram, 30 second videos. Facebook, a minute. TED Talks, 15 minutes. You know, just thinking about time and stopping to discuss. I'm not going to tell you two minutes. I'm not going to tell you. The spirit will guide you as you think about, okay, how long do we need to let this video go? All right, back here in the back. My name's Glenn. Again, I miss, I miss your name. Sorry, I missed your name. My name's Glenn Brower. Thank you, sorry. Um, with the video, just changing prescriptions, improving yourself before the next, you'll do better with the next class. I'm gonna show one more message before I have another question. And a couple of tips. Before, give a summary of what they're gonna watch and an idea for what they should be watching for. Give some background about what's going on in the talk. Many people discuss translation and how it's required in your life. Oh, that's right, I remember that talk. It helps to give a little bit of background first. So while you watch this video, I want you to look for how we can improve our faith. Okay, and in the back of your head, you're watching for any instances that talk about faith. So then, during the video, Avoid talking. I always do that. That is such a bad habit. I interrupt my own videos all the time. Let them watch the video so that, and keep your comments in the back of your head until after. Then you can pause the video. Then you can ask questions for understanding. What do you think? You can move on. Different words that might be a little bit difficult, you can clarify them and maybe, maybe explain them a little bit better ask what's going on. The questions that you ask back here, bring them back up. Get their answers to the questions. After his, though, discuss the sign choices. <coughs> say, I remember that sign choice. I would choose, I would have chosen the same thing or I would have chosen something different. Testify. Let the spirit testify. Don't always wait till the end. Insert your testimony in the middle. When they're done, ask questions. Do you, do you believe that? Tell me your personal experience. Edify each other. Now, I have gone over time. It is now 10.52. I was supposed to stop at 10.50. So I'm going to show one more short clip. I'm just going to put this out here. I'm going to put this out here. The Gospel I Library app on your phone. It is so good. There's use big words, and you can touch that word, and it'll bring up the definition. And we can learn together through the Spirit use in the Scriptures using this. Let me show. I just want to show you this quick example. See this? It's coming. You can make it bigger. The hypocrites. What does that mean? You can discuss what that means. Get their ideas. Focus on that word. Hypocrites. And, you know, we talk about, oh, hypocrite, this is the sign, and oh, you give your own experience with hip hypocrisy, and people can share, you can talk about a conference talk, you can, so much can be involved in that one little thing. <laughs> now, I have one question, one comment left. I'm going to do both of your comments, and then we're going to close. How you set up to go back to switch all that? 
Can you show me that again really quick? Mine's on night. I usually read it bedtime. So I lay in bed and it's dark, it's too bright. So I put it on nighttime. But you can change it to white. You can take yellow, blue, red, whatever you like. Okay, last question. Mark. Some people, when they read, they don't understand hypocrites. You can touch on that word and it'll expand it and it'll define that word. Yeah, here, let me show you. When people don't know, you tech, it helps you improve as a teacher. You know, you're curious about that and it brings up Proverbs. If it was English, it doesn't have ASL video for that, sorry. Because I just have it in English. Okay. On ASL.org, LDS.org slash ASL, it has videos of scripture stories, Book of Mormon stories, and you can use those in your, and I use those in my PowerPoints. They're just 10 minutes, whatever whatever it is that you have. You can utilize those and you can add that to your PowerPoint mm -hmm. lessons when you bring that up. And then the kids are able to watch that. It's a really enjoyable way to learn the gospel and to share together. Like you said before, about before using that to prepare to show the video and then after it opens up the class for discussion. Right? And pausing the video maybe halfway through discussing what, what's going on, what's happening, and then it encourages them to communicate with you. I want to close this workshop. You guys all have a paper with the three different things that we're talking about in the PowerPoint. The right. the spirit, and in the videos. Make sure you pause and invite the spirit in. And then that Gospel Library app to show scriptures and really open that <coughs> Truly helps you involve the spirit in your lesson. I know the Holy Ghost is a way more powerful teacher than any of us. We have calling. We all have the same calling to be teachers. It's our responsibility to teach, but the Spirit will magnify that. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ.